morning and welcome back to the Now Morning Show where we're talking about real women. With International Women's Day coming up on March 8th, we wanted to underscore the significance of commemorating the date. And so joining us is no stranger to the Now Morning Show, Mr. Richie Bans Raj, Gender Training Officer at the Gender Affairs Division, as well as Ms. Kwame Allen, Coordinator for the National Policy on Gender and Development for the Gender Affairs Division. Lady and gentlemen, good morning and welcome. Welcome to the Now Morning Show. Morning, Good morning, morning. Angel. This morning I say welcome back technically to both yes. of you because you've joined us virtually. Yes. But because also this is an ongoing conversation mm -hmm. that we look forward to as we get ready to include people in this year's celebrations. So we're commemorating International Women's Day, but why? Let's start with the basics. Richie, why yes. is that necessary? So International Women's Day is important because it celebrates, it gives a highlight to all of the struggles that women would have gone through throughout the decades and all of the achievements that they would have made <laughs> now in these recent times. So it is celebrated on the 8th of March and it has a history behind it as well. It, the history starts with the international scope of things. In the international scope of things, it started way back in the United Nations in 1975, mm -hmm. where it was officialized on the 8th of March. And then we in Trinidad actually used to celebrate it before that. In 1957, mm -hmm. actually, because we have a lot of activism taking place in Trinidad at that time. So we wanted women to get their maternity, paid maternity leave at that time. So that's just some of the examples of why International Women's Day is important and what it is about. Well, let's continue along the lines of that history, because it also will bring us to present day and the theme for 2024. Tell me a little bit as to the progress we've made and how we're going to encourage inclus inclusion Jim, sorry, for 2024. Um, since 1957 and the acceleration of, let's say, maternity leave in 1995, the Beijing platform came into being. and. I want to bring her name up now. She's dead, Miss Hazel Brown, and the network of NGOs was the leader in getting us over that Beijing platform and bringing it to the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And that platform looked at the empowerment of women. And you ask about bringing it today. Um, today we have a lot more women. We can do more. We can always accelerate and invest in women and accelerate their progress, which ties into the theme for um, International Women's Day. And we today would look at where we have come as a country um, with all the issues facing women. Trinidad and Tobago has progressed over time in having more, let's say, women in parliament, mm -hmm. women judges. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it, it, that's the progress that we face. We just came off of 16 days and looking at the convention on the elimination of violence against women and girls. Right. We still have gender-based violence happening on both men now mm -hmm. and women and children. So even though we've progressed, as a country and as a world, we still have that human rights issue. We still have a lot we to do. Have, yes. Now, you actually nailed it on the head in terms of some of the issues that still plague us, gender violence yes. being a major mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And I love that you've underscored some of the successes we here in Trinidad enjoy. Mm -hmm. A lot of females in leadership positions from presidents come forward. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of the Gender and Child Affairs Division, what the actual goal is. Do we have strategic plans or specific goals that we want to achieve where women, gender violence, and female generally are concerned? Yes. Um, for 2024, the Gender Affairs Division is ruling out the National Strategic Action Plan on gender-based violence mm -hmm. and sexual violence. That's one of the major things. You know, we have the national policy right. that was laid in Parliament in 2018, and we are implementing it since then, looking at the themes of the, the thematic areas in the policy. So with the implementation in the policy, you find Ministry of Labor is looking at unpaid wages, decent policy work. So with the policy being implemented through government ministries, the private sector and state agencies, the issues facing women, youth, the elderly, well-being, our well-being, leadership is bearing fruit 
over time. So the Gender Affairs Division in its sensitization and gender mainstreaming of gender equality and equity is getting progress over time. Yeah. Progress is we good. Want, progress we is want good. to empower women mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. give them, put them in positions of power. Mm -hmm. With the recognition of the International Women's Day, that is one of the main outcomes, to put women in more positions, key positions of power. Mm -hmm. So Richie, tell us some of those plans for International Women's Day 2024. Right, then. so there's a mm -hmm. lot of events that we plan to have for International <laughs> Women's Day right now. It's a lot of stress. Oh boy. We head hot. <laughs> All we head hot. But we put in the Gender Affairs Division in Trinidad on the map, on the regional and international map, because it's the amount of work that we're doing we do, as a yes, team. Of course. So first things first, obviously, the minister have to do her address to show the importance of why we have an International Women's Day. Then we have the launch of the NSAP, which is the National Strategic Action Plan right. against dom domestic violence and gender-based violence. So we have that. Then we also have the Expo, a Women's Entrepreneurial Expo. That is not the correct name, but it is a long name, and that is the main focus, entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is taking place on the 8th of March, which is International Women's Day. And then we have STEP, which is a program that is designed for women who were actually victims of um, domestic violence, actual victims. And it have three elements of that. It is a grant for business, small business women owners, mm -hmm. and a scholarship as well as the second one, a scholarship for business women in terms of if they want to, well, women in general, if they want to do um, academics or technical vocational. Then the third one is for NGOs to train business women in that, um, that sphere. So we have the funds for that, and that's what that STEP program is about. And Ms. Kwame could go on one of the other programs that we have. We have three other mm -hmm. um, main things that we're doing this year. Mm -hmm. We're honoring women in three categories. Women in agriculture mm -hmm. that had an impact in the Republic, our female judges, and women in Parliament. So we'll be having three separate um, events, of which you can invite us back to talk about. But yeah, we'd be doing that mm -hmm. in collaboration with all that, Mr. Pat. Mm -hmm. A lot in truth. <laughs> but we also, let me just put a plug, there are also NGOs out there that, like Network of NGOs, Winard, Seacott, whatever events they're having, mm -hmm. the Gender Affairs Division will collaborate Beautiful. with them. And whatever is happening, even in Tobago, I was on um, Channel 5 on Tobago Radio TV yesterday, mm -hmm. promoting what we are doing. And the Women of Substance NGO in Tobago had a plug for what she's doing. Then you have the Rural National, um, the Network of Rural Women Producers okay. with Ms. Gia Gasper. They are doing a lot of stuff in rural Trinidad. Beautiful. So as we come together to give funding and collaborate, the message is let's empower women. Let's mm. accelerate progress. Let's not forget to invest in our women and girls. Beautiful stuff. Now, with all of this happening, it can be overwhelming to someone who wants to participate. So how can we get this information? Is there a website? Are there pages we can check out for these details? Mm -hmm. um, the Gender Affairs website. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not sure of how what the hashtag is. <laughs> but yeah, but at our Gender Affairs website, we have everything listed and will be posted. Instagram, Instagram Facebook, Facebook, all of these Facebook, things are active there. all yes. the time. Everything Perfect. active, Perfect. all the messages, Perfect. the Office of the Prime Minister's website, and some things based on what it is will be posted on the Prime Minister's website for, you know. Of course. Is Gender this Affairs is. Division. Um, mm -hmm. One other thing I want to give a plug that we are having is the Office of the Prime Minister is having a breakfast and discussion at the Diplomatic Center. Mm -hmm. It's happening next Tuesday morning from 8.30 to 10.30, and the conversation would be around gender-based violence. So that is happening. That's one of our signatures. That's happening next Tuesday. Well, there are going to be many more events, I'm sure, as we continue to strive towards progress. But to leave the nation with some closing thoughts, I'll start with you, Richie, and end with the lady, as it's Gender Affairs mm -hmm. and Women's Day that we are specifically talking about. What are some of the messages for women in crisis specifically? Part of the reason that we observe International Women's Day, as you said, is to underscore some of the challenges that we face and to highlight the possibilities and the progress we've yes. made. Give these women some inspiration. I would like to say that women need, they still need more. 
as much as inspiration I could give these women, they are still vulnerable. And we have we have the domestic violence hotline and stuff like that, which is 800 save. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is only just a little bit of what we can do. It is a community level effort where we have to empower women, starting from the roots, from children, go straight up into adulthood. So we need to work together as a community in order to uplift and empower women, engage them in decision making, and don't try to do too much of empowerment in terms of the patriarchal system where men try to overpower women in a lot of aspects of power. So I would say work together as a team, mm -hmm. women and men, boys mm -hmm. and girls, work mm -hmm. together as a team in order to empower and have equity amongst everyone. Kwame, anything to add to that? Anything to add to that. I echo everything Mr. Bansraj left. But I want to say to women out there, when you get to a leadership role, look back. Look at the women behind you. The number one issue that's facing our women in the world is poverty. Since COVID, a lot of women have lost their jobs. They're still forced to be head of household. So in closing, remember to take care of self and to help one another and keep it as a community issue. And we thank you. Well, we thank you, Ms. Kwame Allen and Mr. Richie Bansraj, representing the gender, well, gender division, essentially, mm -hmm. as we get ready to celebrate, to honor, to inspire inclusion for this International Women's Day coming up on March 8th. Much more of that conversation to be had, but for now, we take a break and come back with more after these messages here on now. But where we get